All right, welcome back, everybody. Streaming again. Got Pete from Rage Quit Wire. We're going to paint up some models from the game A Song of Ice and Fire. And these are actually the Lannister Pyros. And basically, they are a really squishy unit that... Make sure I just mute this stuff. Okay. They're a really squishy unit, but they if, if they don't die... They they do a lot of damage. They throw that, uh, what what's that, the whatever fire that the the green flame that they throw in the and just destroys people on contact. That's what they are. And we actually have uh, Maester Pycelle also in here. And the point of this video is to there's times when you trade for models or you acquire different models when you're gaming. And one of the things that I wanted to do was when you get models from somebody and you don't like the paint job, how do you improve or finish them? So in this case, we're going to have a little bit of both. We don't have it where it's it's like crazy bad, right? Like sometimes you get models and there's so much paint on the model, you lose the detail. These aren't those. This is just more of the unfinished. So once you get models that you traded for that are unfinished, how do you fix them? So that's what we're going to do uh, today. So first thing I'm going to do, though, is I am going to just share. Uh, share now. Just that way anybody that wants to join us can join us on the stream. Uh, share now, friends. Share to a page. All right, so, because like I said, if you've been playing any kind of tabletop games for a while, you've come across this issue where it's like, okay, I, I traded for this stuff, and it's just not the quality that I like. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the parts that are primed white first that are not finished. So like all the heads on these guys, they have gloves that aren't done. So we're going to finish those first by getting color on them. And then we're going to go back and we're going to start to we'll wash those colors. Uh, it looks like the contrast paints were used for these guys. So I'll do the washes first and then I'll go back and touch up all these red robes and touch up these black um, black arms. So that's kind of the goal as we kind of go through this. And the cool thing is if you get models like this that are started but not finished, then a lot of times it actually makes your painting go quicker if you don't have to fix it. The one thing you don't want to do is it would be a bad idea to go back and prime all this stuff. So it, it would be not a good idea to go, okay, I'm just going to reprime this because the more primer you put on a model, the more you lose the detail of that model. So that's why I, if you can save the model, then you want to go ahead and try to save the model. So... This is something that I've had to do a lot just because I trade a lot for models. And when you do that, you need to really get good at dealing with what, what you have. And there's times where it's better than others because sometimes I'll get a model from somebody and it just has too much paint on it. But at that point, you just need to decide whether you're going to strip the model, which with plastic models can be very difficult or if you're just going to try to work with it. Most of the time, I'm going to try to work with it. Because like I said, the more paint you add to a model, the harder it is to get the detail that you want. So you really want to try to not, unless you're going to strip the paint off the model, which if it's metal models, I've done before, because metal is easier to take the paint off of. Plastic, I do not recommend ever stripping plastic unless you got a surefire formula that works. All right, let's bring him in the mix here. Get this creepy old man painted up. Okay. 
<laughs> Get this creeper painted up. Yeah, there's a lot of us in Charleston that want to go back and paint a lot more of the, uh, paint a lot more and play a lot more Song of Ice and Fire. Just because it's a really fun game if you've never played it. Okay, I am going to get the, my little hand holder just because that way you guys can see it a little better. Yeah, I found that a lot of times when I use this, it's easier for you guys on the chat to see kind of what I'm painting. Yeah, the mechanics of A Song in Ice and Fire are really slick. That's why a lot of us pick the game up. Plus, it's Game of Thrones, so if you like Game of Thrones, it's just a good tabletop game. Okay, I think we're good there. The only thing, and when you paint these kind of models where you have a unit of them, and luckily for A Song of Ice and Fire, you only have, what, uh, 12? 12 in a unit? You gotta have a process. Because otherwise you will be painting forever. Especially the first army that I painted with the Song of Ice and Fire were the Free Folk. And I just, I don't know why, but I got, I got into them. Got about three quarters of the army painted, though. So, because it's all about just finding a process of how to make your stuff look good, but make it so it's painted quickly so you can play it. Free Folk army actually looked pretty good, too. I gotta paint these Baratheons up. Yeah, there's a, and it doesn't matter which house you like. There's a lot of them that are coming out now. Like the uh, Tolis have been out, which are basically just part of the Starks army. And then there's also the Greyjoy should be coming out sometime soon here. The Targaryens just came out. Okay. Yeah, but if you haven't played against these guys, if you have played A Song of Ice and Fire, they're pretty sick. They just straight up do wounds. There's no saves, you just die. <laughs> oh, man. All right, and another one. I know those of you that don't do army table topping anymore, you see a group of like 12 minis for one unit and you kind of go running because you're like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to paint this many models. What I want to know is how are these guys dealing with all these pyros without any gloves on? Yep, so I was laughing because I was painting some God Tier stuff the other week on stream. And one of the patrons for the Rage Quit Wire came on and he was like, Man, you just, you're cranking through all this stuff. Aren't you going to run out of stuff to paint? And I was like, Dude, I got so much stuff to paint. So much. It's the thing when you paint really fast, you never run out. 
especially since I do like random kind of commissions for locals mostly. Sometimes I'll paint for people around the country too. I did that for a while, but then I got a son and you just don't have as much time when you have a family like that, especially when they're younger. So we're doing a little more streaming than we are commission work these days. Still having a blast though. So these models are going to turn out pretty cool and got Brandon on. How are you doing Brandon? Cool thing is, is we're kind of just assembly lining these Song of Ice and Fire models out and it shouldn't take us that long to paint them. These are models that were already kind of came to me pre-painted. They're actually uh, the final round, Jacob, they're actually his models. And he got, somebody either painted them for him or he got them already painted, but they didn't finish it, right? So what we're doing is we're streaming how, what are some easy steps you can do to help finish a model because I'm sure a lot of people in the chat that come back and watch this are going to know is that when you get models that are either used, primed, painted, sometimes they don't look good, they're not finished. So this is to help you figure out how to finish these models. So the red and black on these were already done and now we're just kind of finishing up the model. So you guys can see I'm just going through all the models, putting skin tones on. I'm going to go through then and I will add some more browns to the models because they got boots and these kind of bracers. Sorry, I'll try to keep up there in the camera for you guys. And and then finally we'll wash the areas that are not contrast because I'm not going to wash the contrast paints that are already on there. Because that's what these paints are. This is uh, the contrast red. I can't remember what type it is. And then the contrast black. Okay. Got four more. And that's the thing. Like I said, just get yourself an assembly line. And it's really just a mentality when you gotta paint units instead of individual models because games like Malifaux, Guild Ball, Crisis Protocol, they're great because you only need a handful of models, right? There's some some factions in those games where you literally probably only need about three to five models. And you can paint those and spend your time on them and you don't really bat an eye. But when you have units, and this is just one unit, and you're probably going to have at least three more, that can really kind of wear on you while you're painting. Because right now I'm painting hands and faces for one, two, three, that's seven, eight, eighth time. And if I wasn't so dedicated to just painting this in my regiment, I would be like, man, I'm so tired of painting the skin. So you really just got to kind of force yourself. Just keep, keep doing it. There's only so many. Just will through it. Yeah, sorry for being late on the stream today. Usually I like to stream about two or three for y'all, but had some work stuff, had some grocery shopping I had to go do. So we streamed a little late at night. It's going to be a short one too, probably only stream for about an hour. Mainly just want to show you guys how far you can get with these already primed and somewhat painted models in about an hour. Okay. 
Okay, and one more guy. <laughs> if you see these guys on the table when you're playing A Song of Ice and Fire, <laughs> kill them quickly. If you have archers, shoot them. If you have Cersei, zap them. Because these guys will ruin your even most heavily armored unit. It's cool. So, Cook, I don't know when you just sent that message. You might, I don't know, hopefully you're still in the chat. Just give me a thumbs up or a hey if you're still in the chat. But uh, Cook asked when I started playing A Song of Ice and Fire. Probably... Uh, I don't know. It's probably about a year and a half ago, maybe. I picked up the free, whenever the Free Folk set come, it came out, that's when I started. I saw the Free Folk and was all like, oh man, that's cool, wildlings. And then I saw how many models I had to get, get together, and they're so unreliable. At least they were before the updates. I just, I couldn't do it anymore. So I mainly play Lannisters now. And Lannisters, neutral. Like, I have some Baratheon stuff, but I don't know how long I'm going to hold on to those for. Uh, I got a lot of I got a lot of Lannister stuff, so mostly Lannister. All right. Pie cell's mostly done, so we're just going to put Pie cell to the side. All right, so we got our skins on. We're going to take this brown, and we're going to do all their boots up. And we'll probably do gold on the bracers to make them slow if we have gold bracers. Yeah, let me know, Eric. If you play, uh, if you play a song of ice fire, let me know what uh, faction you paint up or you're playing. Okay, so we got all these guys. Like I said, got the skin tones on there. Just need basically their leather uh, boots, metal bracers, and then their hair, and then we'll do a wash on them. Yeah, I think I miscooked. Missed, missed cook. There it is. Hopefully I'll go back and check out. One of the things about doing this new, just got to kind of get used to checking the chats while you're kind of going along. Because especially when you don't have a bunch of people in your chat to start off. Like I notice a bunch of people when they do streaming regularly and they have a few people pop in all the time and they just go straight into chatting and stuff. But when you're kind of just starting off with streaming, especially something kind of, you know, niche like painting miniatures, it's one of those things where uh, when somebody starts in the chat, sometimes you don't recognize it right away because you kind of, at least me, I'm used to kind of not having people immediately in the chat. So hopefully Cook comes back and we'll hang out a little bit. Maybe I'll send him a message here in a second. Okay, I think we got that guy's boots. Cool. All right, let me send Cook a message real quick. Just so if he wants to, he can chat. Going back into the boots. We're going to do simple bases for these because that way the model just pops off. And there's kind of a couple camps with that. Some people like really detailed basing. And then other people just do simple basing because they don't want to distract from the model. <laughs> so I guess it just it depends on if you consider yourself a good painter or not. If I'm not a good painter, I'm going to dedicate a crap ton of time to make the bases look cool. <laughs> cool, Cook. So 
that he's at work. Which is one of the cool things about YouTube, especially if you're just on your uh, computer a lot for work. You can just kind of keep it in the background and listen to it while you're doing whatever. So, yeah, Cook, I was just asking you uh, what faction you play in a, in song. Yeah, and if you don't play a Song of Ice and Fire, maybe you're just kind of checking this out because you're a fan of the show or you're just final round game shop and you just want to see what I'm painting. Anytime you hear somebody say song, that's just referring to a Song of Ice and Fire because the game is based on that book where all of the units and all the heroes are based off of that book when Robert dies. So when Robert Baratheon dies, that's when this game picks up in the fluff. So that's why if even though you maybe like the Baratheons, you will not see Robert in the game. But you do see Eddard. Eddard is hanging out in the in the game for a brief period of time. I think I'm one of the few people that just doesn't get behind the Starks. I'm not a Starks fanboy. My favorite house is definitely the Lannisters, and I know that, that makes people judge me a little bit, and that's okay. I just think their characters are more interesting. Especially when you look at, through the show, you have Jamie's character. Right? So Jamie Lannister is this really kind of odd character where he goes through this spoiled kind of rich boy phase right where he's you know the best and he is so arrogant and that's kind of like his downfall right his pride and his arrogance and then it's kind of taken away from him he's he's humbled when he has to try to continue to live that kind of life when his hand gets cut off and then we even see at the end when he's like just has to decide is if he's going to become the hero or are his loyalties going to remain with Cersei and his family. <laughs> yeah, I think, in, and I'm actually doing the same thing, Cook. He talked about the problem that you can have in, like you do with Warhammer 40k in fantasy or Age of Sigmar. Um, where you can start to get too many factions because you're like, oh, this is cool, let me get that starter. Oh, this is cool, let me get that starter. So I'm doing the same thing right now where I'm actually getting rid of some of those factions and trying to get it down to one faction for this game because I like it, but I don't play it enough to really just go all in on it. If this was my favorite game and I played it all the time, I would have tons of factions, right? Because that's just me. But it's not. So I think the game that's kind of speaking to me right now is Malifaux and God Tier are kind of my two games that I'm like, yeah, these are kind of what I'm dedicated to for a while. And the sculpts are cooler for the Lannisters, I agree. If you like wolf pelts, you'll like the stacks. Now I got the reins of Castamere stuck in my head. Who are you? <laughs> That's all right. Not everybody likes the Lannisters. That's fine. I understand. They're jerks. A lot of people will say that I'm a jerk, so that's fine. From New York. I try not to be, but 
we are who we are, kind of like Popeye. Alright. Okay, how many more boots we got? Progress. Halfway through the unit. Boom. I'm saying, man, just get a pattern. Assembly line it out. This thing will be done before we know it. Get a clock check. I haven't even been going for 25 minutes yet. Good deal. Like I said, we're going to see how far we got with this kind of repaint of the model. Because those of you just joining, we're not fixing, but we're trying to salvage the paint job. So we see what they were starting to do. We got these models, and now we're trying to figure out, okay, how can we paint this up to look good without stripping it and without... putting too much paint on. I forgot to paint your bald spot. You got your fryer tuck going on and I forgot to paint it. Okay. Look at this fryer tuck hair done. So we are going to paint some of their hair brown as we kind of go through them. Just because generally speaking with units like this, I like to do blonde hair, brown hair, black hair, or gray hair. That's generally going. And if it's some kind of Norse, Norwegian, Viking, dwarf looking stuff, I'll add some orange red hair in there too. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to be choosy with your with your war games cook i uh i have a bunch of friends that are heavy into crisis protocol which is fine it's a cool game um i'm not a huge heroes marvel kind of guy I, I like them kind of casually so i mean i'll play it but i'm not i decided not to invest in it i'm just like if somebody wants me to play it i can borrow their stuff for the store copy and that's cool but yeah, I can't. I can't, just, especially since with Marvel uh, Crisis Protocol, it's like, I think it's like 20 to 40 bucks a box. They almost got me, but I was just kind of like, I can't justify this. It's just too much. You only have so much time in the day. Okay. Yep, and I would say the most thing is just like, what are people wanting to play? Because you got the starter, which is cool. So if you move somewhere, cook, or if you uh, just have somebody that's really wanting to try it, You'd be like, hey, I got the starter. Let's bust it out. Right? I mean, it's not a bad thing to have the starter, at least. All right. Google. All right, we got four more. We can do it. Yeah, Cook, I started playing Malifaux, and I got into a faction, and I started off with just two, no, I guess it was three masters, and that was all like, sweet. That quickly turned into all the masters. I think I'm only missing one, and I kind of have a deal already set up for it where basically anytime I want it, I can get it. Okay. Make sure you guys are checking out the YouTube channel. We are trying to build that up. 
uh, content like this goes on there. I'm trying to do something at least every other day. So any kind of support, whether it's views or you can actually even support us directly with Patreon. We do have a Patreon page. We're going to jazz up in the next few days here. We got some ideas for some cool benefits for being a Patreon uh, in this next iteration of rewards. So our patrons that are already with us are going to get this automatically. But if you sign up once we start this, it's going to be a new series of dice we're doing. So it's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Might see if anybody wants to play God Tier tonight. I'm kind of itching for a God Tier game. Okay, I think this guy's good. He can leave that there. Uh, do I want to pay? Yeah, we got a couple of other baldies. Probably this bald spot because of all the pyro he's been putting out there. Mm-hmm. Are you the proud Lord said? Yeah, so I kind of got a bad rap in this game for a little bit because I was playing the Lannisters and the Boltons. And my buddy who's on the podcast with me, Chris, is just like, what is wrong with you? How could you like the Boltons and the Lannisters? Just, it's good stuff. All right, moving right along. One more guy. Uh, we'll get this guy brown here too. And the cool thing is when you do this brown hair, sometimes I'll use brown hair as a base and then wash it and then actually build it up to like a dirty blonde. That's something else you can do when you're painting. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the Boltons have some really interesting units. The Flayed Men kind of got toned down a little bit, uh, which is fine. But they just released the cards for the Baratheon cavalry, and good God! I mean, I know they're the Baratheons, but man, they're gonna hit—they're slow, so they're really slow cavalry. I think they're only speed four. Um, but they hit like a hammer, and speed four is not a huge deal with cavalry, just because they move twice, so doesn't matter. So maybe I'll keep my Baratheons. I don't know. Because a lot of their armored units just look cool. It's really cool units. All right, Piacel. Do we need any brown? It doesn't look like it. All right, so we got our brown. Okay, and let's get these gold bracers. Or bronze, I should say. Let's do by cell first. Are you saying that you sell the new kit because I'll get more money from Cook? Is that what you're saying? Because you're not wrong. I've done that plenty of times.
Alright, anything else? It's all like tan rogues and stuff. And the contrasts are, yeah. Yeah, the problem I have though, Cook, is I don't know where Renly is. I have his cards, but I can't find the actual model. And I'm like, well, I can't really, I mean, I could sell it and just be like, hey man, just proxy it, but it's never great. But yeah, those those Baratheons are cool. I kind of want to keep them. Just get rid of my Lannisters. Lannisters are kind of tough to sell though, just because it seems like everybody has them. Just because that starter and the Kickstarter was really good. I don't want to go watch Game of Thrones right now. That's the problem. Every time I start painting a song of Ice and Fire, I'm like, oh man, I totally need to go watch Game of Thrones. Getting some gold where I don't want to get it. Okay. Sometimes I use a wash for the skin, but I'm actually going to use a contrast paint when I do this. It'll be a little more interesting when I do. Yeah. I don't know, man. A lot of people were mad with the way Game of Thrones went down. I never read the books. I started to read the first book, and I just haven't been able to finish it. Not because it's bad or I didn't enjoy it. I just kind of didn't have time, and I... I, it's tough because I, when I watch a show first, I kind of already see the movie in my head while I'm reading. And I'm like, well, you know, I could just watch this. Don't need to read it. I don't know. Maybe somebody else will tell me if they're the same if it's hard to read books after you've seen the movie. Unless the book's way better. I will say, if I can notice that the book is severely better than the movie or show, I'm all in. I uh, I went to see World War Z and it was okay. It wasn't much to write home about, but I then read the book and the book was amazing. It made the movie look like crap. So that was one instance where I actually read a book after I watched the movie just because it was that good. So one of the few books I've read after watching. <laughs> Uh, they didn't uh, Martin come out with the Targaryen book maybe I can't remember Yeah, and that's the thing, Cook. I noticed that, like, the first season, there were only a couple of things where it's like, oh, that didn't happen, but after, uh, 
I've heard that from a lot of people that they're like, oh yeah, it really changes later. That's where you started hearing people getting mad that they strayed so far from the books. It was around that season five kind of time period. Yeah, when you when you watch the show and they kind of talk about the White Walkers, you're somebody who hasn't read the books, once again, this is coming from, I really didn't get a sense of what the heck they were talking about with that part of the storyline until a couple of seasons in, right? Like, not until pretty much they went to Mance's uh, house and you start to see those white walkers like taking off with kids and stuff and that's when you start to realize like oh this isn't like some bs this is actually real stuff okay man i tell you it's tough to paint, paint units Probably one of the reasons I don't play those kind of games much anymore. I gotta really like it because this is something that it's just a grind. Young man's game. I used to do this all the time. 40k in fantasy, which was a lot more models than this. Especially the armies I played, like Tyranids, Orcs. Skaven, Orcs and Goblins. Shine on, you crazy diamond. Yeah, maybe I'll go back and read the books. I do enjoy the show a lot, and the book was really good while I was reading it. I can see why it became such a real, it had a really huge following just with the books. And obviously, the show it blew up way more. So, maybe I'll go back and read it. Got the summer coming up. Summer Pete. All right, do I got it? Nope, one more. One more, and then we gotta get all these different hair. Maiden fair. You know, it is interesting with Lannisters because you have Jamie, and I think Jamie played into that storyline really well, where a lot of times. In stories like this you see men saved by women like their flaws are saved and changed by women and that's kind of like Brianna Tarth and Jamie you see that a lot yeah that is true cook when you get watch the show and you get to put a face with the characters It's like, I remember how mad people were when um, the Hunger Games came out. And uh, was it Ruby? No, Rue. Right, Rue? From the Hunger Games where she was, she was like black and a lot of people were offended by that. And it's like, well, she's from the Southern District and it's agrarian based. I mean, it's not far-fetched. <laughs> 
And it's not crazy, just because she was one of your favorite characters in the book. And you were picturing her white. Get over it. All right. Let's, so we just got to finish the hair, and then we're going to put a wash on these parts. And then I think I'll layer the cloaks one, and then we'll call it good there. So I'm not going to do black hair because I got the black sleeves. I'm going to do some of these guys. Let's do a couple of blondies just because they're Lannisters. Then we'll do a couple gray heads. <laughs> yeah, quick, you should check it out sometime. I uh, started doing a series with people like uh, Prohaska and Dennis where we do like an online paint party. And it's pretty cool. You get to see both the things that I'm painting and they're painting. Not simultaneously because that would be difficult to pull off and have it where you can see a lot of detail, but it's really cool because we just sit here and talk back and forth and share painting techniques, nerding. So I'd, I'd recommend checking that out on the YouTube channel, uh, Rage Quit Wire, if you get a chance. Because it really, it's just a really cool series that we're doing. And it's a lot, like I said, a lot of what I do by myself, but with some banter, which makes it more entertaining. It's long, though. We usually do about two-hour paint sessions, so it's something good just to check out and skim through. The cooler part is when we have people in the chat, because then we can chat with each other and then people also in the chat. So we're actually going to do one live tomorrow night at about 8.30 your time, about 9.30 Eastern. Yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, looking pretty good here. Okay, and let's get some of these gray heads and then we'll call it good for the hair. Oh, where's my gray? There it is. Same thing with Picel over here. He actually has black hair, which I think is what's throwing me off with the model. Picel needs to have white hair. We're gonna make this gray actually a little lighter. Turn it dry brush this a little bit. Gray. Cause you need to have gray hair. Okay. Old Maester. Hey, blonde. Sorry, I'll put these guys back on the stick here in a minute. Cool, cool, cool. So 
Sorry, get you guys a little better look at his face of fichas. Man, I tell you what, I was, uh, like I said, I've been playing a lot of God tier. I was just kind of looking at some stuff that people painted because I like just checking out cool things that people do. And this one person painted Rodri, who's kind of a dwarf ish looking model. I mean, he's a dwarf. So he just looks like your regular armored dwarf ready to fight. The face the guy painted on him was amazing. Beyond my skill, easily. Okay, you're good, you're good. Okay, we do need some more skin tones. I noticed I missed some gaps here. And then I'm also going to paint these little potion bottles. They have, and then we can wash. So where's my skin tone? There it is. I'm not gonna put you guys on the hook for that. Baldy. Oh, Friar Tuck look. Okay, anybody else look kind of weird? God. Just put my fingerprint on top of this dude's head. Okay, how's everybody else? Maybe looking pretty good. As I answer myself, well, we know, Pete, we're doing pretty good. Ooh. Okay. Let's do some silver. So, God Tier is the same company that made Guild Ball. And basically, it is a hex based system that you have three champions, so kind of like three leader dudes, and each champion has their set amount of followers. So they're just these guys that follow them around, and the idea is that the gods have died, and it's a cycle kind of system. So the gods died. It's going to be kind of quick, so I don't need to. And they're out kind of collecting these what's called god tiers. They're basically parts of the old gods. Once they find them, they collect them, makes it more powerful, and the goal is to become a god. So there's two phases. One is a plot phase, one's a clash. In the plot phase, you mostly plot against your opponents, which is moving, putting some either buffs or negatives on them. And then the clash phase is when you can do damage, and you score points by knocking out champions, you can score points by planning your banners and keeping them up. And you can score points by knocking out the followers. And the models look really cool. If you haven't a chance to look at God Tier's model range, they're really good. You don't have to assemble them. Just good, good models. Really enjoy the game. I don't like how they painted these brown. So I would either do what I'm doing here and painting these silver, mainly because they'll kind of stick out a little bit. When you paint them brown like this, they kind of just look like little satchels. I want them to look like vials or something you would put a potion in. Molotov. All right, we're doing on time. Not bad, a little under an hour. We're going to fit in this pretty good. Yeah, God Tier is a cool game. I, if you go back, once again, quick onto the Rage Quit Wire YouTube channel, I've been painting a lot of God Tier champion models. 
One of them's my favorite is called uh, Sneaky Pete. He's a goblin that is a slayer. He kills other champions. So he's he's pretty cool. I like the way I painted him up. Alright, last guy I believe. I don't think Pycelle needs any silver. Not where he's going. Alright. We'll take a look at the unit. We need to put this somewhere where it's not going to get everywhere. Just shove that in there. Yeah, it's cool. It's one of those games where I... I've been fortunate enough to do content on Steamforge games before, so I'm kind of already familiar with the company. So I've got a lot of insider knowledge, interviews, and stuff with the company. And we also got a group that is willing to try different games around here. And a lot of us like it a lot. All right, so we got the coats on, we got the different colors. There's a couple of these guys that need red painted on the inside of their cloak. I'm going to do that real quick with the red contrast paint, which I have somewhere. Maybe it's still over there. Never mind, I want that. I'm going to use this dark red. Um, so I'll touch them up, and then I'm going to put a wash uh, contrast on the skin, wash on the hair, and the other parts of the body, and then I'll highlight the red, and then we'll probably be close to calling these guys good. A little under an hour. Just got to do the bases. All right, so don't need to worry about that guy. Sorry, I just need to do a check. It's like, who doesn't have their cloak painted? Maybe it was just that one guy. It was just that one guy. So I'm not going to show this just because. Take just a second. Just a second. All right, so let's do this contrast paint. All right, so I need, so this contrast Gilliman's flesh. Okay. So this is gonna go on their hands and faces just to give it a good contrast to it. I'm not a huge fan of doing this by itself. I like doing it on top of either a flesh color already, or you can even do a bleached bone kind of uh, color. Okay. And this this contrast paint is going to give you a real good kind of tan flesh. It's not going to be elvish. So if I had to kind of, sorry, I had a hair on there. Um, if I had to give a race or something that was attributed to this, it's more like dwarf flesh than it is anything else. Yeah, see. That's all we're doing, just boom, move on. This kind of unit we might not even highlight. Because something you want to think about when you're playing, so a lot of people like to do a lot of detail to models like this, right? And I always tell people, okay, you are playing a game where you're going to have probably somewhere between 60 and 70 models. Right, get the Song of Ice and Fire. Don't think that's a stretch. So, in your infantry units like this, is it worth spending all the time for you to spend days painting models? Think about how quickly in the Song of Ice and Fire, how quickly some of these models end up coming off the table. There's times where in one activation, you might lose your entire unit. 
and no offense, I don't want to spend that much time painting stuff that might just be ripped off the table super easy. So, and if you do spend that much time painting these types of models, that's fine, right? But I always look at how are these models going to play on the table? Are they going to be the centerpiece? Are they going to, are they somebody that I really like? Because obviously if it's a unit that I'm in love with, uh, for example, uh, what's going to be kind of the most recent example of this? Oh, what did I just get done painting? I just got done painting Sneaky Pete. Here's a great example of that. So Sneaky Pete is a goblin. I love goblins. And he also is kind of got this weird pirate thing kind of going on. So I put a lot of time and use a lot of the tricks I have into painting him. And that's fine. He's the champion that I've spent the most time painting. And it makes sense because he is the one that I like the most. So obviously if you like one of these units a lot, sure, spend your whole weekend, your whole month, painting that up. But if it's something like this where you're going to have dozens of models, it's like just, just get it looking pretty good and then move on. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Cook just men mentioned how he used to spend a bunch of time painting Imperial Guard. And that sounds awful because I played against Cook before and I've seen him play 40k where he's literally just kind of scraping off piles of IG models after they got destroyed in the game. And I can I've seen some of his IG stuff where it looked amazing. I'm like, dude, that is cool. And then in game, they just get plastered. And it's like, how much time do you spend painting that kind of stuff that doesn't see effective gameplay? And like I said, there's nothing wrong with painting Imperial Guard for that long. But especially when you get in the grind of it and you're like, I just want this to be done. Just find a good way that they look and you can live with on the table and just paint them quick. Play it painted. Sooner it gets painted, sooner you can enjoy and have fun with your toys. Okay, halfway through the unit with the contrast on the skins. Yeah, it was the same way, Cook. I actually uh, did the same thing with uh, Tyranids. And I painted a lot of like my gaunts really cool with their carapace. I painted a lot of gene stealers really cool. And at the end of the day, I'm just like, this stuff is dying way too quick. Okay. Four more. I'm not going to do this contrast on Picel just because he's already got a bunch of paint caked on him. We're not trying to lose. He already has a lot of detail kind of lost. So we're not trying to lose any more detail. Three more. <laughs> Those are going to be pretty cool when they're done. Like I said, goals just to take what the model, because once again, anybody that's come this far into it, when you get models that you trade for, you don't know what condition they're going to be in. These were models that when I started off, they already had a slab of paint on them. 
and it wasn't the worst I ever saw. It, it was very doable, very workable. But there's going to be times where you get something, you're like, I have to get really creative to make this look good because stripping plastic models is tough. It's hard to get plastic models to get a lot of that original paint off without tearing away parts of the model. So luckily these guys didn't have that problem. But still, the robes kind of look wonky, right? They just used the contrast paint on them. So we want to finish them up is the key thing. Now right, let's get a look at the unit, Put that on there. We'll do a wash real quick, and then we'll paint these red robes, and we'll see what they look like. We just need a wash on the bracers. And what else do we need to wash on? Ah, oh, punk. Oh, sorry, I just got some of this wash on my dang finger. Give me one sec. Yeah, lean that pot back without the top being clipped down. Put that over there. All right. So let's see how that we're looking here before we get this wash on. This is going to be a spot wash. This isn't a wash over the whole model. These cloaks are going to be bright. Make sure if you guys haven't supported Jacob at the Fun Around Game Shop, make sure you guys go ahead and do that. Like a lot of game stores, he's been kind of struggling his way through this pandemic. So I appreciate anybody that has helped out the man. There's my black wash. All right, let's do a spot wash and then start painting these robes up. We're gonna hit up things like the hair. That will go back over. And then get these bracers. And then we'll move on. The bracers will probably go back over with the gold just to touch them up. Okay. Yeah, once, because the main thing that's really making these models look unfinished are these red robes because the contrast paint wasn't applied
it was it was kind of just slapped on there, and I think think it's just, it was used as kind of a base, and they were probably going to build it up, and it may just have been one of those things where you just get halfway painting a model and you just never finish it. Something that happens to plenty of people, including me, where you just start painting and you're like, crap. <laughs> this model is never going to get done. Halfway through the unit, and then we're going to get this red, and then we're done for the evening. A little over an hour. Yeah, you can really fix a model up just with some good old tips and tricks. Okay. These cloaks are going to be the things that take a second to do. Like I said, luckily, even though it wasn't complete, having these models already have the red contrast on there did help a lot. And it's nice when you get models and you trade for them, or somebody paints them for you, when they get some of the hard paint out of the way. It's fun. I just want GW to make a Space Marine movie. The the game that came out for Xbox a handful of years ago was amazing. The one where it, it was just Space Marine. So you just played the different classes of Space Marines and the game was actually really good. It was quite surprising. Okay. Three more. There's the old Jason, probably hoping I was going to be painting some more God tier stuff. We are painting a Song of Ice and Fire. We have these models that already had paint on them from somebody else. And we're trying to church them up and make them look good. Because you know how it is when you trade for models sometimes. The models you get aren't up to your snuff and you want to improve and paint them. Okay. Say, Jason, I really enjoyed our God Tier game the other day. It was a lot of fun to play against you. We should do it again sometime soon. I know you're busy with your move coming up, though. Yep, Jason, you can be one of my streaming buddies now. Yeah, I thought the gold was kind of a nice touch on these guys. This P3 gold, it's uh, called Rulik gold. It has a lot of really nice layers to it. All right, let's paint this red up. So I'm going to highlight this red with a pretty bright red. This, these cloaks are going to look almost a red but also orange. Yeah, Games Workshop. That's all you need to say, right? <laughs> oh, Games Workshop. All right, so we're going to build off of the contrast red with this red. 
And we'll even kind of build it up and highlight with an orange. Let's start with this guy and then we'll go into the Grand Meister. So we're going to layer this up, smooth out some of these, some of these marks. Also, a lot of times this contrast paint can turn out to look a little flat. So I think it's just important to kind of go through and give it back that pop that sometimes the contrast paint just doesn't have. So like I said, I like the contrast paints a lot, but there are times like this where you're like, eh, that just, that kind of looks flat. Let's just... I light that back up. Okay. Some of this, when I stand him up like that, will be out of camera. Just know I'm kind of popping his collar here a little bit. They just painted the back of his head red. We'll have to go back over that. You know, when you speed paint, you're going to do that. Where it's like, oh, just painted your head red. You're a good dog. You look like you got like a blow to the back of the head. Ever since I can remember, I've been popping my collar. Yeah, because when you use this contrast paint, sometimes it just settles weird. And usually cloaks are really good for contrast paints, but there's just something with these models where... I don't know what the... I mean, it was white primer, but... Because it just didn't settle quite right. All right. I think you can see that the cloak's kind of starting to flow a little better, and when we get these orange highlights, it'll look really nice. Now let's see what the Grand Meister kind of looks like here. Let's get some red on him. The old horn dog himself, Master Pysel. There's Anthony. Anthony who low key pops in the channel every now and then. I don't know if I would have gone red with Picel's cloak here. Because that's one thing I think about when we see these games and they're really colorful like this. Because even when you look at the show and you look at real kind of medieval life, it was dark and dreary, man. Nobody could afford brightly dyed clothes. So really it'd just be your royalty would have that kind of clothing and then everybody else would just be wearing burlap sacks so we just find it interesting when you see stuff like this like a priest like this a holy man somebody who is kind of like a master of knowledge probably wouldn't have clothes like this I and mean, he's already I'll pop him out but this already looks, his cloak especially looks significantly better, just that one layer. And we'll hit up these edges with a hard orange and kind of fade it in a little bit. 
yeah, we'll get these cloaks and then we'll call it good for the night. Um, and we'll look at what the unit looks like when they're painted like that. Oh God, I got this headset. Sometimes it doesn't like to sit perfectly while I'm painting. It can be agitating. Like right now, it's sliding down. I want to murder it. And they're coarse air, so they're supposed to be like really comfortable. Well, these Lannister models are just like kind of, I was telling with Cook earlier in this video, just really, they do have more color because with the Starks, you get a lot of grays and dark blues and just kind of things like that. Whereas Lannisters, you can really pump some colors into it. And I think I'll go ahead and hold kind of a couple of these up together. But you can kind of see the difference between between these models. Right? So obviously this one, or sorry, this one's not done yet. You can see that really kind of in the back. It's not bad though. It just has this kind of weird effect with it. Just that kind of unfinished effect. And the camera doesn't necessarily even pick it up that well. Who's painting from there? All right, let's see how we're doing. Okay, we're gonna go for about another 10 minutes. We'll see if we can get through all this red in 10. We're not gonna get to the point where we highlight. This model did not get primed all the way. There's still some bare plastic there. So I'm kind of painting this guy up and camera's not gonna catch what I'm seeing. But as I'm putting the paint on, it's almost, you can tell it's not sticking fully to the model. Meaning like you can see part of it running off So I had to kind of coat it on there a little bit, and that's because whenever this was primed, it wasn't fully covered with the primer. So when whoever painted this, they just put this 
contrast paint on top of the model where there is still plastic. So, kind of a pain in the butt, but like I said, when you trade for models, you're not going to get the ideal model. That's why when you buy brand new, they cost so much more. And that's why whenever you buy something that has paint on it, it doesn't matter if it's the most beautiful paint job in the world. Most people are going to look at that model as now damaged and used. Because one, it's not how I was going to paint it. And two, you may have damaged the model. It may not be a good paint job. Which I'd say most times that is true. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna re eat. <laughs> Does that mean you're gonna go eat, Jason? One sec, you're not gonna be able to see that. Okay, getting close, getting close. I'm just highlighting the high points. So as I kind of go along these models, leaving those recesses where the contrast paint hit initially, leaving those the kind of darker color where that contrast paint really settled in. And once we get these high points painted, be good. And probably not gonna get all these done because I only want to paint for another five minutes here. And we got four of them done. So we'll do the, f I'm gonna, uh, we're actually just going to call it there. I got these first four done with the red. Uh, I think that'll give us kind of an idea of what it's looking like. And then when I, if I don't paint them tonight, I'll finish them up on stream tomorrow afternoon when I stream kind of at my normal, uh, normal time. So compared to what we were looking at before, the front row is kind of done with their red. Back row is looking pretty decent, except for we got to fix the red. But pretty vast improvement over what we're seeing. This is Pi Sol, too. We'll get him kind of in the picture. Creepy old man. Got to highlight his beard a little bit more, too. And especially, we're going to paint these bases black. These red, kind of really bright robes are really going to pop on these black bases. Um, pretty excited about that. So, just, why not, I'm not going to touch these guys tonight. I'll just finish this up on stream tomorrow. I'll finish up with the, uh, with the cloaks. I'll go ahead and highlight some of these skins and some of the hair. And then I'll just paint the ba bases black and we'll just see what they kind of look like. So, been been fun doing this <laughs> yeah so if you look at that guy you can kind of see some of the differences like i said it's hard to kind of catch it on camera but this guy is the one that's kind of not done and refined with his cloak but the rest of them is kind of there this guy in my what you guys are seeing on the right kind of has some of those highlights. So you can kind of see here, it's kind of a little messed up, 
Whereas this one, the transitions are starting to look smoother. When we get these orange highlights, it's really going to pop more. So we're in there. The skin and stuff wasn't done, Jason. You can go back to the beginning of the video if you want to look at it once it saves and is on the YouTube channel, which doesn't usually take very long. But they didn't even have skin colors. Uh, all that was on them was the red and black. So we got quite a bit added to them since we started kind of converting them to look like the models we want them to look like. So thanks for joining in though today, guys. Like I said, I'll finish these up on stream tomorrow and I'll then do kind of a side by side of uh, what the model looked like when we first got it. I'll take a little screenshot of it and then I'll put when we're fully done with it, what it looks like, because I, I feel like that is one of the challenges when you paint is when you get these models you traded for, how can you get them to look good, but not put a crap ton paint more on them or have to waste time to figure out how to, you know, strip them. So make sure you guys check out the YouTube channel. Thanks for coming on Jacob's channel, uh, final round game shop. Uh, he's, he's doing pickup orders still. Hopefully when this thing starts, trying to drop it off he'll open back up and we can all meet up in game there but you got to support him guys otherwise he's not going to be there so make sure that you're buying stuff through your local game stores like the final round that way they can open back up when this whole thing's over so till then pull dice throw salt play song of ice and fire it's a great game